Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Hi, Michelle. Hi, John. Hey, Art. Hi, Michelle. Hey, Art. Good to see you again. Hi, Art. Hi, John. Great to be with you. <laughs> get, get all those hellos out of the way. Very right. complicated. Thank goodness we don't have four people. Wow, that'd take forever. <laughs> we're, we're, we're working on it. <laughs> hey, Michelle, uh, at the end of our last session, um, we were talking about divorce and uh, moving on. You had given us um, really uh, some real good advice about dealing with uh, divorce uh, from the person's individual's point of view of um, recognizing your part in it and uh, forgiving, forgiving your spouse and uh, being able to to uh, make amends and, and move on. But you teased for us uh, another half, if you will, about moving on. So that's what we want to pick up with, moving on. Where, where do we begin with that subject? Yeah, yeah, great. Well, obviously, that's also part of moving on. So they can kind of go back and forth, both of them. However, this is more oriented, orienting towards the future, like you said. So I would say the first thing is to find a new creative outlet or cultivate an existing interest that you may have you might have left by the wayside. And um, often in a relationship, sometimes at least, we might have put aside some parts of ourselves that we didn't have time for, or maybe our spouse wasn't that excited about us doing that particular activity or endeavor. So I really, I, I see people get lit up and energized by doing something creative and fresh um, to feel like a kid again, basically. Yeah. Kind, kind of interesting. Um... Uh, as you talk about moving on, I guess there are really uh, two big moving on uh, factors. One, if you have children, and one, if you don't have children. And even if you do have children, if they're grown and off in their own lives, or if you're uh, uh, sharing, parenting, and things like that. So uh, uh, I, guess, I assume it's easier to move on if, if there are no kids involved. Generally, I would say that's true, and yet in individual circumstances, some not so much. I mean, what if you wanted to have children and you never did, and here you are at a different stage of life? You know, it just depends, really. Every situation's pretty different. So, you, Michelle, we're talking about really rebuilding your life. Uh, you're not a couple anymore. Uh, you're divorced. You've accepted it. You've forgiven yourself. You've forgiven your partner, and moving on is about rebuilding your life for the best it can be. Am I am I going in the right direction here? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, and it's really a time to get to know yourself again. And um, you know, a breakup can be a, a new impetus for personal growth. Um, you can use what you learned about yourself and take that into your present. Take that into your future. You know, who are you right now? Maybe you've been with your partner your former spouse for a couple of years or a couple of decades, right? A lot of life has happened. So the, get curious, like what is your vision for what you want your life to feel like? And, and I don't mean specifically about not necessarily another partner, like that might be part of it, but that might not be part of it for a while. Who knows, right? It's just, it's, it's, it's your life now, just, you know, solo. Is there a, um, a, a big, um, a challenge for some people to do that? Uh, are some people, um, d do they have the um, the inclination to um, really not change, just do the same old thing, but now without a partner? Yeah, I mean, and sometimes if your life is working pretty well for you, and then maybe you, you love your work that you've been doing all, you know, for a while, and now you're not with your former, you know, spouse, Life can go on maybe pretty well, but if you, you know, didn't don't like your work and you don't like, you know, the relationship is over, then you're kind of more at a crossroads and you're really having to rebuild more of your life. So it just it just depends on what parts of the puzzle um, or the pie are not really enlivening you or you know nourishing you in some way. Yeah. So that's and, that can be harder. And you really have to look at your life, uh, which a lot of people don't don't want to do. <laughs> Right, but but right. that would be that would be in, in any case, even if you're in a successful marriage. But after thirty or forty years, or after the, the kids are grown, uh, uh, to reevaluate what you're doing and maybe get rid of some old stuff. So it doesn't seem like uh, it's too much different from that. It's just a question of how do you basically jettison 
these old things that have either held you down or prevented you from doing something and uh, uh, as you say, move on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I want to also say that, you know, moving on doesn't mean forgetting and it doesn't mean like ignoring when something sad comes up or something painful. It, it's really important to, if your feelings do come up, feel your feelings because when we feel, we heal. Okay. And this is important stuff to do, whether you're doing, uh, uh, well, at this point you're, you're not dealing with a partner anyway. You might be, if you have younger children involved in your co parenting and things like that. Uh, but you're just saying that you should use the opportunity now that there's been a major change in your life to think about the things that you failed to do because let's say you were in this relationship or you blamed on being in the relationship and you didn't do, and now you now get rid of those excuses. They don't exist anymore and move on. And have you seen, a, uh, can you give us an example of somebody uh, that you worked with who's done without mentioning who they are that made a dramatic change in their life? Uh, a real uh, life example. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking of someone who had had some pretty painful, um, two painful marriages actually that were, um, kind of bordering on abusive, I would say. And he really was hesitant to be, you know, on his own and he was used to the companionship, but obviously it wasn't super positive. And so he really, um, you know, took some time to look at, you know, how he was showing up in those relationships. Maybe some things came up around his, um, what he realized was things that were happening when he was young in his family of origin. So some of these things are really old patterns that we find ourselves in. And when he was able to see those, and let go of them. And even like, you know, what some of the work we did is just expressing some of the frustration and, and anger um, about what happened in the situation. It just, it lost its charge for him. And he was able to sort of feel this freshness about being where he was and get excited about his work again and, and move on. So it, it just, it, it, it takes time, but it can, be, it can be done. And it can be, you know, like a liberation process, really. You know, Michelle, we're, we're um, all of this is, by its very nature, kind of generic talking about uh, divorce and what people go through. But our audience is over 50, and a lot of divorces happen to older people, to older couples. Uh, divorces in the 50s and 60s is not unusual at all. And uh, when you're in your 60s, um, even in your 50s, you you have a different perspective on life. You You don't sometimes see that you have a lot of life in front of you, that you have the opportunity or the time uh, to move on and to change and to get better. And uh, uh, is it, am I correct? Is it different for people? The older you get, uh, uh, the moving on is harder? Um, well, I think, you know, maybe in general, that's probably a good um, guess, I would say, but it it's really depends. I mean, maybe you were only married for a couple of years or maybe you were married for, 30 years, you know, it really depends on those situations. And also often during the course of a marriage, you know, some shifts apart are already starting to happen over time. So, you know, it depends on how much you might have done before, you know, during the marriage, reinventing yourself, maybe finding a new career path or whatever, finding new friends, new activities. So different things can be happening, you know, while you're still in a marriage that's maybe not satisfying. That's why they're happening, right? Because you're starting to look elsewhere for other things. But, um, it, you know, just we, we don't know how much more life we have. And oftentimes we have a lot more than we think. And we might as well live as if we have many more years, right? I mean, <laughs> that's the, we don't really know. But I, 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 the positive outlook is always going to um, go better. <laughs> yeah, positive outlook is, is important at any age. You're absolutely well, right. One of the things that I really appreciate about the discussions that we've had here, Michelle, is that you are a love and relationship coach and you put most of your effort uh, and, and focus on having people build and improve their relationships. But you're also a realist and sometimes it's at the point where it doesn't work anymore whether people are married or they're just in a, in a relationship that, that is not salvageable. Uh, uh, and then once that happens, then you are able to shift and help individuals get the most out of the new situation by saying, move on, forgive, let, let it go, whatever, whatever the terminology is, 
and allow them to not be trapped and a prisoner of an old relationship while they try to move on to the new relationship. So you always take a really positive attitude, and I think that's terrific. Yeah, mm. and good and good tools. You've you've really offered us uh, some good tools in in dealing with the divorce and the last video we did, and in moving on. You know, uh, now, re John offered our, and offered our offered our audience good tools. Okay, we don't need tools. Yeah, my wife wouldn't like it if I got all if I started right. using all those two tools to move on. That wouldn't be good for our marriage. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the last thing I want to just invite is, I mean, this is a general valuable thing to do, is just appreciate what you have right now. Like, you know, gratitude is, can be a daily practice and, you know, it's proven to improve our well-being. It's like, what are you grateful for now? What is special about you? What have you learned? What are you going to create in your life? It's kind of like, you know, we can celebrate where we are right now, no matter what. Yes. And, um, and even when the feelings come up that we, you know, feel sad or whatever, you know, appreciate your capacity to, to leap into the unknown with somebody to, you know, to, to, to be in a relationship take, it takes courage, right? I mean, we're, we're choosing to, to, to put our eggs in a certain basket and, and be together. So you got to honor your, I want people to honor their capacity to, to trust that process and to trust connection and love. Yes. And love, because you're the love coach, Michelle. <laughs> and yeah. speak, speaking of being our love and relationship coach, our love coach, is that um, uh, people can go to Celebrating the Act 2 YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Celebrating the Act 2, and watch individual episodes or binge watch, because now we have <laughs> a, a whole series of Michelle's uh, thoughts on uh, various uh, relationship items. And uh, there is a playlist. So um, uh, during these uh, long, cool nights, hot nights for the summer, uh, we can binge watch uh, Michelle and the uh, as uh, our love connection, our love coach. And Michelle, if people want to reach you directly, the best way is? Yeah, they can find me on my website. Uh, send me a message from there, uh, michellefabrica.com. Good. Well, we know how to reach you. Mm -hmm. And we'll be reaching out to you very soon for our next video on love and relationships. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.